الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأطهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful All praise is due to Allah We bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah And we bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is indeed his final messenger the best of speech is the book of Allah and the best of guidance ever is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we repent unto him and we seek his forgiveness may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his forgiveness ya rabbal alameen my brothers and sisters we live today in the age of advertising the age of packaging and advertising where it is no longer good enough that you have a good product that product of yours must be well packaged and it's not good enough to just have good packaging for the product you must also advertise your product and now it's not good enough to just advertise for the product your advertisement must be captivating. It must be very good. Otherwise, people will not value your product. Advertising is so important that they say that globally, the world spends about $400 billion on just advertising. People are not selling anything. $400 billion is spent on telling you about products in the US the ninth major industry is advertising and marketing it comes after government after the medical profession it comes after real estate it comes after services and then number nine it is all about packaging advertising and marketing soon enough people will be playing the Super Bowl the finals of the American football and it is estimated 
that a half minute commercial is going to cost about three million dollars. 30 seconds is going to cost the company that puts its advertisement on during the Super Bowl about three million dollars. That is one million dollars for every 10 seconds. But why do big companies, why would they pay so much money for just half a minute? It's just half a minute that you're going to get on the air and you will have to pay three million dollars for that. Coke and Pepsi. The actual content plus the can of Coke or Pepsi, it costs about 16 cents. That's it. All it costs, they say that it's even less than 16 cents to actually make it, the content and the, and the can itself. Yet we pay 75 cents for it, sometimes a dollar. Yes, well how can we pay so much if it's costing you so little to, to make it? So yeah, see, it costs more to advertise for Coke and Pepsi than it costs to make Coke and Pepsi. Because now, telling you that Coke and Pepsi is good is more important than the content itself. So we are in the age of packaging and advertising. They get psychologists to put the packaging. Well, you know what would be most appealing to people? And it does not matter what the content is. It could be something that is very harmful to the human being, yet it is presented in the most beautiful ways. We go to the store and you look into them alcohol bottles. Wallahi, they look beautiful. The content itself is terrible. But the way that this content is packaged and shared with us makes it so beautiful. Makes it very appealing. Cigarettes. That package is beautiful. Doesn't matter what the content is. There is poison in it. But it looks beautiful. Because now people have to appeal to the human psyche. To tell us that, you know what, it looks beautiful. Sometimes you just buy it because of how it looks. So we are in the age of packaging and we are in the age of advertising. And nowadays, it is not only the packaging and the advertising of just products, but you also have to package and advertise your idea well. It's not enough that you have a good idea, but you must package it well. And that is why sometimes we look into the ads on paper and we go there and we feel that people have lied to us. The advertisement says this, but you're not giving me that. How come? We're very disappointed when what we get is not what people advertised for. And that's why subhanAllah, they even have advertising uh, tricks on people. You know what? Our cars are selling at this price. You go to the dealership and you know what? There's only one car at that price and it's already sold. But let's tell you about the other cars that we have. So they get you in. Buy this at this price. You go there. Well, yeah, see, in order to get this price, you have to also buy that. But it doesn't say this on the advertisement. Well, you know, too bad. And they say nowadays companies will tell you, if a happy customer walks out, most likely they will tell six people about what a good experience they've had. You eat at a restaurant, yeah, go to that restaurant, you know their food is good. However, they tell you, if you have an unhappy customer, most likely they will tell 250 people. And that is why they'll tell people and say, make sure that all the people that walk in happy, they walk out happy. Otherwise, you're going to lose a lot of money because that's not good advertising for you. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew the importance of advertising. Knew the power of packaging. And he knew the power of them unhappy customers. Subhanallah, in this beautiful incident, a man by the name of Ibn Salul, as they're walking back to Medina, he makes an incredible silly remark. And he said, إِذَا رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَيُخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلْ The man was a hypocrite. He said, when we go to Medina, those who are dignified are going to drive away those who are debased. 
And he's talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He's speaking about himself as the one who's dignified. He said, soon enough, us are going to drive Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the other debased people out of Medina. His own son was so upset with the statement that his father made, he stood right out on the skirts of Medina, telling his father, you're not coming in. He said, I am your father. He said, you're not coming in. إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْذَنَ لَكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Except that you be given a permission by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he goes back to his father, to the Prophet of Allah and says, Prophet of Allah, my father made a terrible statement. If anything is to happen to him, I want to be in charge of it. Meaning that if you think that he deserves to be killed, I want to do that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam then, and listen to this. He said, أَتُرِيدُ أَنْ يَتَحَدَّثَ النَّاسِ أن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يقتل أصحابه صلوا على رسول الله. He said, wait a minute. Do you want people to talk and say that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم actually kills his companions and his disciples? You want people to say that about us? Is this the kind of advertisement that you want people to know about us? Is this the way that we're going to package Islam and deliver it to people? That people are going to say, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is killing his own companions. He said, that cannot be. That cannot be. That will be a terrible advertisement for the deen of Allah. That will be a wicked way of packaging the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That people are going to be talking like that. He's talking about the power of a word. The implications of people having the wrong impression. An erroneous perception of what Islam is all about. That people will actually say this. He's telling us that killing is wrong, but look at him. He, he calls himself a prophet of Allah, and he himself is killing the people around him. What would people say about this? Subhanallah, in these recent events that took place a few days back, you cannot help but say, do we really know what Islam is about? Do we really know what the teachings are of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How is it Islamic that somebody will actually board the plane with the intent of killing innocent civilians? What is so heroic about this? What is so brave about this? It is nothing but foolishness. And it is actually part of wickedness that we call such a thing to be an Islamic thing. Now, please don't misunderstand. I share the grievances. I think that the greatest threat in the world is the American military machine. Wallahi, I believe this from the very bottom of my heart. The greatest threat in the world is the military machine in this country. That I don't doubt. But how do you go about addressing this issue? How do you go about fighting that clean fight? What do we say about that? And that is why subhanallah, the beauty of this deen is that it's the deen of al-haq, truth. Where we Muslims, part of this deen is that it is the deen of truth. One of the names Allah of Allah is al-haq. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. And we as Muslims, we have to speak the truth. Regardless who it benefits and who it harms. Look into the Quran and see how the messengers of Allah addressed the social wickedness and the injustice that was taking place in their time. Shu'aib is sent to people who are very oppressive. They're not fair in their business deals. They take advantage and they exploit and they marginalize the weak amongst them. He comes and he addresses this issue. He does not shy away from telling it like it is. You people are exploiting other people. And here I am to address that. But then subhanallah, he tells them what ethical moral codes he's going to use in addressing these issues. Qala ya qawmi, araaytum in kuntu ala bayinatim min rabbi. وَرَزَقَنِي مِنْهُ رِزْقًا حَسَنًا بعدين وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُخَالِفَكُمْ إِلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ 
إن أريد إلا الإصلاح ما استطعت وما توفيقي إلا بالله عليه توكلت وإليه أنيب He said, oh my people, amongst the seven qualities, the seven moral principles that he states, he said, oh my people, I wish not in opposition of what I tell you that I be caught being guilty of exactly this thing that I am forbidding you of doing. I can't not be telling you do not exploit people, yet I am guilty of it. I cannot be telling you do not marginalize, do not take away what is rightfully belongs to other people and I am guilty of taking it away from them. Said, you will not find me guilty of this. What do I want? He says, in uridu illa al-islaha mustata'at. I only seek to rectify. I only seek the betterment. I only seek the progress of those who are around me. But when I do it, I am not going to use the means that you are using. Now we cannot really address, say yeah, many people are dying in Iraq, and many people are dying in Afghanistan, and the military industry in this country is definitely responsible for a great part of it. But how does it help that we say that you're guilty of killing innocent civilians, and we ourselves go around and kill innocent civilians? So why are you killing innocent civilians? Because you're killing innocent civilians. How stupid is that? And then we say, oh, the Quran even said it, an eye for an eye. al ayn bil ayn. Yeah, but you have to think. It is the eye of the perpetrator for the eye of the innocent. Not the eye of an innocent for the eye of the innocent. We do this and the whole world goes blind. The whole world will go blind if this is the kind of mentality that we carry with us. It is the perpetrator's eye, not other innocent civilians. And as a result, what is happening? As a result of this terrible advertisement and this terrible packaging that people are presenting about Islam. Globally, people hate us. What is the biggest problem in the world? It's the Muslims. And locally here, people despise us even more. We just had a display down in Mission Viejo. You know, it was the New Year and it was the Ramadan time and it was Hajj time. So they would ask people from different faith groups, you know, to put a display. You know, let people know that you're there. And we put a nice display with verses from the Quran. You know, verses from Surah Al-An'am, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsani wa ita'i dil qurba. That Allah commands of justice, Allah commands of goodness to the parents, Allah commands of goodness to the poor and the needy and the wayfarers and the relatives. It was beautiful. So what do we find last week? Somebody comes and vandalizes that display of the Muslims using big paint and just paints all over the place. And then they stick a paper there saying, no lighthouse of Muslims in America. It has gotten so bad that in Switzerland, they actually passed an amendment to the constitution saying that no more minarets for the Muslims. They needed a hundred thousand signatures, they got more than that. People are saying just don't give the Muslims anything. Why is that? Because people look into our behavior and they say, well, if this is what you want, if this is what your religion is, we don't want it around us. It's too terrible, it's too violent, it is too inhumane that somebody would actually board a plane with the intent, I want to bring everybody down. Wallahi, there is nothing heroic about this. And worse, even more, there is nothing Islamic about this. لذلك كان مما يوصي به عمر الناس يقول يا عباد الله لا تبغضوا الله إلى خلقه ولا تبغضوا خلق الله إلى الله He said, oh people, do not be responsible do not be guilty of making people hate Allah because of you Sometimes people look into religious people and say is this what religiosity means? You know what, I'm just happy the way I am I really don't care for Allah, I don't care for Islam. You just keep that Islam and Allah of yours. Just keep them away from me. He said, do not be guilty of making people feel that way. Subhanallah, listen to Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا او الله دون ميك اس ا ترايل ا تيست فور ذا ديس بيليفرز ابن كثير كومنتس اون ذيس اي ان هي سيد ابراهيم عليه السلام سبرين سي او الله let not our condition make people not wanting to consider islam because of who we are and where we are the same prayers is made by musa alayhi salam rabbana la taj'alna fitnatan lil qawmi dhalimin oh allah do not make us a trial do not make us a test for the oppressive people sometimes people see us and they say you know what i am really not happy with my own beliefs but islam is not an option for me had it been good it would have done good to its people and sometimes we muslims like to say you know what islam is good but the muslims are not you know what judge islam by how good it is don't judge islam by what the muslims do this is like saying the medication is really good but the patient is not getting better how can you call the medication good if the patient is not getting better no no really wallahi the medication is good well the patient is not getting better so the same way that we say islam is really good but the muslims are not what good is it then if it's not making people better if it's not making them good people then what good is it then what good is it so when we look into this that is where al haq comes in allahumma arina al haq haqqan warzuqna ittiba'a the messenger of allah would pray and say oh allah show us the truth as the truth because sometimes the truth gets clouded so oh allah i pray that you show me the truth as it is and oh allah i pray that you grant me success in following the path of that truth sometimes people say well, how can you be saying this man don't you see what is going on in iraq and what's going on in philistine and what is going yes i see it but is killing innocent people the answer to what is going on is killing innocent civilian people here going to stop the killing of innocent civilians over there all you had to do is just turn on the radio or the conservative host shows to see what people are saying nowadays about islam they're becoming so unbelievably blunt with their statements waterboard all of them you know kill them all and god will sort them out we don't know who is who and now people are in favor racial profile every muslim if they look middle eastern if they have a muslim name of course do that to them and then we can say but that's not constitutional say you know what yes not all muslims are terrorists but every terrorist we catch is a muslim and i'm not saying this to justify what is going on racial profiling is a crime it is not what civilized societies do but by the end of the day we're giving them the ammunition by what we do so as muslims we do not approve we do not condone of this type of behavior and when we say it, we don't shy away from that this is not the deen of allah this is not the deen of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we know the killing the attempt to kill innocent civilians is not part of the teachings of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we condone it and remember when we we condemn it and when we condemn such kind of behavior it does not mean that we are negligent we are heedless of what others are doing but we have to do what shuaib alayhi salam said wama uridu an ukhalifakum ila ma anhaakum an we can never be guilty of that which we tell people please don't do at that point it is nothing but hypocrisy aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwal ghafurur rahim الحمد لله وكفى والصلاه والسلام على رسوله المصطفى وعلى من باثاره اقتفى just to give you an idea of how powerful advertising packaging and marketing is they ask people as to which animal insect anything you hate most what scares you most 85% of the people said we hate mice and rats they're very scary mice and rats they say we hate most we have a very important question to ask 
How come Mickey Mouse is the most famous personality in the world? Serious. If 85% of the people say that they hate mice and rats most, why is Mickey Mouse the most famous personality on earth? Because somebody took that, packaged it, and then presented it to us. In the packaging, Mickey Mouse looks so beautiful. It looks so innocent. And it's very appealing. You see Mickey Mouse? Every child will smile. Even though we hate rats and we hate mice, but we don't hate Mickey Mouse. Because Mickey Mouse is beautiful. Why is it? What has changed? Somebody pre-packaged it and presented it to us. Now Islam is this beautiful deen, but it has to be packaged and it has to be delivered and it has to be given an advertisement that is befitting to its beauty. Who does this? Each and every single Muslim has to be in charge of the packaging and the advertising of this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why when we see people who will look at us and say, you know what, is this really what Islam says? I want to be part of this. People really say that. And subhanAllah, sometimes you look into, into how people come to Islam because somebody gave Islam in a beautiful package. A sister came to our masjid wanting to become a Muslim. And I said, what was it about Islam that made you want to be a Muslim? She said, well, you know, I was, the company decided that around the Christmas time that they were going to give us a gift. And they had a list of the gifts that we can expect. And you can get this and you can get that. And there was this Muslim man going around saying, man, I will take anything, I just don't want the champagne. She said, I've never heard a man say that before. I don't want the champagne. She went to him and she said, are you serious? Everybody is asking and begging for the champagne and you're telling us that you don't want the champagne? He said, yes, I don't want the champagne. Why is that? He said, I'm a Muslim. Muslims don't drink. He said, I come from a background where my father was alcoholic. My parents got divorced because of alcohol. There was a lot of domestic violence in our house because of alcohol. When I knew that there was a religion that actually forbids alcohol, I said, I want to know more about this. That's beautiful. It's the packaging. I read yesterday or the day before that one out of five people, of every five people between the ages of 18 and 54 in Russia dies because of alcohol. 48% of that country's population are alcoholics. Can you imagine people going there and saying, look, we're Muslims. We have the answer to the problem, to the national epidemic that is going on in Russia. That would be beautiful. But it all has to do with the way we package it and the way that we advertise it. And remember that this is everybody's responsibility in this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the best manifestation of our deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good understanding of our deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our behavior a testimony for our beliefs, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma Ya Rabbi Farraj Hamm al-Mahmoomeen. Wanafis Karb al-Makroobeen. Waqd al-Dayna an al-Madineen. Allahumma Ya Rabbi Rahm Mawtana. Washfi Mardana. Wafukka Asrana. Waafi Mubtalana. Allahumma Aafi Mubtalana. Allahumma Aafi Mubtalana. Waqtum bi Salihat al-Baqiyati Ajalana. اللهم اجعل خير أعمالنا خواتيمها وخير أيامنا يوم نلقاك اللهم توفنا وأنت راض عنا اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي عظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكر الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون واقم الصلاة